It doesn't make any difference how much or how great the move to discredit the gospel or discredit the people that are carrying the gospel. You know, people can say a lot of things, but there is one way to the throne of God, and that's through the man Christ Jesus. There's only one way that we can be saved, and that's through the blood that he shed on the old rugged cross. There isn't any other formula whereby man can be redeemed. There's no other way that man can be salvaged out of the, the rubble that we have found ourselves in today. Do You know, if you had told a person 10 years ago that there would be the type of motion pictures that are being made today, people would have said it could never happen, never happen in this country. Why, the, the churches would never, they'd never stand still for anything like that. Or the type of, uh, of a lot of amusement that, that you see today, but 10 years ago, people would have been absolutely shocked out of their mind at the things that are happening. But yet it's such an insidious thing that it's been creeping in and creeping in. And now you look at the overall effects of it. Like every time there's another move made to demolish the morals of the nation, demolish the church structure, demolish, you see another decrease in, in, uh, in everything that is good everything that is godly, and you see that the crime rate goes higher and higher and higher. Every move that is made against God and His people. There isn't anything in this world that is going to help us. There isn't any way in this world that we're going to figure ourselves out of the problems that we have today, but in God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning. He is the end. And He told us these things. He said, any person or any nation that turns its back upon God, that nation is going to fall. There isn't any other direction that it can possibly go but down and out. What has happened to every other nation since the beginning of time or every other people that have turned their back upon God or people who have felt that they could choose their own religions? Just make a religion out of whatever they wanted. There's only one way, and that's the old fundamental beliefs of our fathers. There is no other way. And it's so simple that a little child can understand it. Do you know there's going to be many of a highly educated person, when it's all finished, that are going to find that they stumbled even over education, that they stumbled over the realities of a living God, because God made it so simple. And he said, unless we come to him as little children, that there is no other way that we can be saved, but that is we come as a little child. A little child, when they realize that they have done something wrong, when they realize that there's punishment for the wrongdoing, then suddenly there's a remorse, there's repentance. And that's the way God has to bring us as children. You know, I don't think there is anything any more beautiful than to see a human being, a human soul, kneeling at the throne of the living God and asking a sovereign God to have mercy upon their soul and accepting the plan of salvation of their plan of eternity. And this is the way God is going to have it. There is no other way that we're going to find eternal life than through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, you think so many times about the different religions that have rose up the past few years. And we've seen them come and we've seen them go. And what should we do about them? Nothing, absolutely nothing. God tells us what to do. He says, leave them alone. Jesus said that he would separate the wheat from the chaff. He's the judge. He's the one who will say which is right and which is wrong. But if we just move on with the old time religion, if we willingly will go out and tell others the simple plan of salvation and let the spirit of the living God convict, let God move upon the hearts of man. Let God do a work in the life of people. 
because man doesn't go very far in a man-made religion until he begins to realize that he's made a terrible mistake. What are the fundamental beliefs of our fathers? What was our nation founded upon? It was founded upon in God we trust was founded upon Christianity, that we believe beyond any shadow of doubt that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, that He hung on the old rugged cross, that He shed His blood for the remission of our sins, that He died, that He rose from the dead, that He sits at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for our sins. This was the faith of our fathers. This is what our nation was built upon. This has been the strength of our nation. This has been the courage of the men of our nation. This has been the strength of our children. This is what has made America such a great nation. When we've seen others fall all around us, and yet our nation has stood firm and it stood strong. As long as we had these principles, in our lives, as long as we believed that God was a holy God, as long as we upheld the things of God, that we believed that God was holy and that we couldn't take His Word and do with it whatever we would like to do or to make some sort of different religion because all these things always lead into the same thing. But if we could firmly stand upon it is written in the Word of God. This is the faith of our fathers. This is the place that we need to move into. And if we are to be saved, that is our only chance. And you know, like so many times, I ask you in closing, if you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you know religion doesn't mean anything. It has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. We could be the, a member of many, many churches, and still, when it's all over, we could be lost. But do we know Jesus Christ personally? Do we know Him as our personal Savior? There is a place in God that you can know beyond any shadow of doubt that you are ready to meet Him. I thought about the dark hours recently in the hospital, and the thing that came to me, what do people do at a time like this that do not have God? What would they do? Because the terrifying thing to me, not the terrifying thing of being there, but the terrifying thing to me would be, I am here, I am facing death, and I have no God. That to me would be the most terrifying thing in this world but I felt a peace and a security that I knew Him as Lord and Master, not someone that I had heard about, not someone that was a part or a portion of a religion, but knew Him as my personal Savior. This is the thought that I want to convey to you today. There is a place in Jesus Christ that you can know beyond any shadow of doubt that you have passed from death unto life. There is a place in God that you can know beyond any shadow of doubt. If this were the day that God was going to take me home, I am ready to meet Him. I am ready to meet God face to face. You know, could you think of anything, any greater exchange in this world, but that God would take our filthy sins, that He would wash them away in the blood of His only begotten Son, that He would drown them in the sea of His forgetfulness and not even remember them against us anymore, that all we have to come with is just our sins, lay them at the foot of the cross, our lives that are twisted and torn and warped by the ravages of sin, and exchange them for a brand new life in Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. When you come to a place that you are willing to fall down on your knees before God and to confess that you're a sinner 
and ask Jesus to come into your heart to make you a new creature. You know, God didn't say, I would like for you to be born again. I wish you would be born again. He said, there is no other way that we can be saved. He said, you must. It's a commandment. It's positive. You must be born again. And that's the only way that we can ever really know him, is that we accept him into our heart as our Lord and our Master. And then we know him as our personal Savior. You know, I think about the many, many thousands of people that I have seen come to Christ. I think about the many lives I could tell you one testimony after the other. You know of how so many young people that their parents would be members of different churches, but they were not saved. They were not born again. And through the salvation of their sons and their daughters, that they too have come to know Christ Jesus as their personal Savior. People that were truthful, that looked at their sons or their daughters and they knew that their lives were unmanageable. They knew that there was something desperately wrong. And then they saw such a change come into the lives of these people that they knew beyond any shadow of doubt that something supernatural had happened. And they gave the credit, they gave the glory to God. And through the salvation of their sons and their daughters, they came to know Christ as their personal Savior. Now, this is the greatest miracle in the world is the miracle of salvation. Seen thousands of people that as far as medical science was concerned, there was no answer for them. Drug addicts, people that were just simply and completely ravished by sin, by torture and torment, and see them accept Christ as their personal Savior and see them instantly delivered from every type of narcotic addiction, alcoholism, lives of all, all sorts, all kinds of sin, and see them pick up a Bible and go out and start proclaiming the glory of Jesus Christ to others. I don't care who you are out there, and I don't care what you are, what your sins are, because it doesn't really make any difference. Because this is why Jesus died. He didn't say, now, if you have a couple of little sins. He didn't say, now, if you've committed one sin, I can forgive you of that, but this, I can't forgive you of something else. He says to come as you are. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be whiter than snow. And if you never really have feel like that you have ever committed a sin in your life, Remember the one thing, we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And that law still applies, we must be born again. For there is no other way whereby man can be saved than through the blood of Jesus Christ. So whatever your personal condition is, here for just one moment, would you, will you, just kneel down wherever you are, Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Say, God, I want to know. I want to know about this no-so salvation that Susan talks about. I want that born-again experience in Jesus Christ. I want to know beyond any shadow of doubt that if this were the day that I would have to meet you, that I am ready. Let me hear from you this week. Tell me, Susan, I was saved. I was saved through your telecast. You know, this is the greatest thing in this world when we hear from you and you tell us we were saved through you. The Lord